The inside scoop on the Mattisau, Friedman, Russ Hamilton, ultimate bet, God mode scandal. A behind the scenes look at the times. Mike Mattisau lost maybe a million, maybe more. Friedman lost three million, and he also lost a part of his poker soul. He was gutted and left to rot on a California beach somewhere. I played with Russ Hamilton's backers at the Horseshoe back in the day. They told me stories of how their business worked. And I can tell you, it's the stuff that the underworld is made of. Well, let's start off with a little bit of background filler. From 1988 to 1998, my old stomping grounds was downtown Binion's Horseshoe. And then in 1998, the Bellagio opened up, and Becky Binion was about to sell the World Series of Poker in the Horseshoe. At the time, I had no idea, but it was the end of an era. An old era was ending, and a new era was about to begin. In 1998, the Rounders movie also came out. And then in 2003, the moneymaker effect was activated, Poker, all of a sudden, was all the rage. And there was easy pickings to go around for everybody. And then came Black Friday. It hit on April 15th, 2011. I was there, and this is a tiny glimpse of behind the scenes back then. So I never played online poker back then myself. For starters, I know too many wise guys in the casino business to fall prey to any online gambling nonsense. I know every trick in the book, and I've seen half of them put into application on live games in real casinos, with real consequences. Stressful stuff, to say the least. So before the God Mode software was activated at Ultimate Bet, I can tell you that there was early MIT wizards at play. For example, the Mafia can persuade an MIT computer genius to work for them. But trust me on that. Okay, for example, no MIT computer software wizard is going to turn down an underworld captain who can walk this 20-year-old kid and all his friends into the hottest club where the hottest babes are and take them into any strip club drinks on the house, thousands of dollars of walking around money to boot. I mean, you have no idea how they treated these young MIT computer wizards, kids, who invented this God Mode software, okay? Even before Ultimate Bet was in action, the mob had it on day one. All the wise guys knew about it. They were all warned. They were all in the know. You'd be surprised how many sites it was going on, and no one got caught. I mean, you talk about silly internet bastards, but we're talking about the guy who got caught. Russ ha Hamilton. Ultimate bet. I've already told you that I played poker at the horseshoe with his backers. I'm talking about the guys who backed him in all the live big games, the guys who backed him when he won the World Series of Poker, the guys that gave him the money to play. These were wise guys, okay? They told me these guys went down into Mexico, and they actually opened up illegal casinos in Mexico. They were doing very well until the Mexican authorities found out who they were and their shady characters. Anyhow, the guys who backed Russ Hamilton were kicked out of Mexico for running illegal casinos. Yes, we're talking about the real McCoy wise guys here. Casino wise guys. And I'm telling you, this goes deep. So is it any wonder that Russ, Russ Hamilton was not prosecuted, he was not touched. No, this doesn't surprise me at all. Okay, how about a little speculation now by analyzing the intel I just told you. Was Russ Hamilton, was he a straw man, front man, owner of Ultimate Bet, or was he really part owner, but for not as big a chunk as you would think? I mean, why is this a legitimate question? Because number one, like I said, Russ had backers 
in the 70s and 80s? Why wouldn't they still be with him in the early 2000s era? I mean, these guys were no one to mess with. But I got to tell you, this was just the way things were done back then. I mean, this was normal for the times. After all, that's how things were done back then. It was almost like SOP, Standard Operating Procedure, when it comes to unregulated casinos. So I would guess this is why Russ had super confidence that no one would mess with him. And when I say that he had super confidence, look at what he says right here. Hamilton actually says this. I did take this money, and I'm not trying to make it right, so let's get that out of the way. When you hear him say that, and knowing what I know, I mean, Russ Hamilton had super confidence that this scandal was going nowhere, even though it was featured on 60 Minutes, the 60 Minutes TV show. Imagine that. So let's talk about one of the players in this scandal. We have uh, Friedman here. Apparently, Friedman lost about $3 million. Now, the whole time that Friedman is getting his ass handed to him at Ultimate Bet by Russ, ha Russ Hamilton, he was married to D. Long. Now, this is a, a beautiful 30-60 poker player at the Bellagio back in the late 90s. She played 30-60 over there. I can tell you... For a fact that every 1530 poker player at the Bellagio wanted to win badly and move up to 3060 just to sit next to her. I mean, I'm just saying. Okay, so D played 3060 at the Bellagio in, in the late 90s. I mean, she was Huck Seed's girl. Oh, yeah, Huck Seed. He was a young man back then. D was a young girl. I mean, was this the girl? Was this the one that Huck Seed let get away? I don't know. You'll have to ask him, but I'd be careful about that. You know, some people were touchy, and, you know, this is a sensitive matter. Now, how about Annie Duke? Annie Duke was involved with Ultimate Bet. I mean, did she know anything about this God mode that Russ Hamilton used? I don't know. And, um, but if, let's speculate here, if she did know something about it. Was that why she was promoted on TV programs? She was put on Donald Trump's TV program. I mean, at this point, nothing would surprise me anymore with Hollywood. Okay, we'll talk about one more thing. Let's talk about Aruba, because this, is, this does not surprise me either. It's no surprise to me at all that Ultimate Bet would choose Aruba as a place to hold their annual live poker tournaments. Now I could tell you some sting I could tell you some stories about Aruba that will make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Okay. Uh, for example, I knew a guy who was a general manager down in Aruba. He went down there and he there was two owners of the casino. My friend was a general manager from the States. He was second generation gambling from Vegas. And uh there was two owners of the casino, one in the States and one who was on site in Aruba. So my friend finds out that there's some money laundering going on in the casino. So he tells the owner there in Aruba, hey, you got some money laundering problems here, blah, blah, blah. The owner says, hey, don't you worry about it. You just, keep, you just do your job. You're the general manager. Well, that's part of the general manager's job is to notice money laundering. But he kept on pushing it because he was second generation gambling. He had a, a reputation to with, you know, uphold. So he made a mistake. He called the owner in the States. And he told the owner in the States, listen, you got some money laundering problems going on down here. You know, uh, drug money coming in from South America, blah, blah, blah. And the owner from the States was pleasant and polite, but that was the end of the conversation. Before you know it, my friend, the general manager, woke up at midnight in his nice house on the beach with Aruba police and military holding M16s at their head, had him down on the ground, scared to death, his whole family, children. They took his passports away from him. To make a long story short, he barely got out of Aruba alive. I'm telling you, they do things like if, you, if there was a roll going on in the dice table, 
and I'm not going to talk about Caribbean stud poker or anything like that, but there, let's just say there's a casino down there and there's a roll going on in the dice table. It's a long, heavy roll. The general manager at a certain casino would walk into the dice table. He would sit down at the box. He would switch the dice. Bam, seven out, game over. Uh, there is, There are no rules in Aruba. <laughs> okay, I think uh, we'll leave that story for another whole nother video. So again, no surprise that Ultimate Bet would hold their live poker games in Aruba. All I can do, I'll close out this segment with this. Uh, don't do any gambling in Aruba because, you know, hey, just don't do it.